Hello, Amy. Welcome home. I didn't expect you to be back so early. And look, you have your little bundle of joy with you. Congratulations on bringing a healthy and beautiful girl into the world. I'm incredibly proud of you. Oh, hi, Lisa. Thanks for dropping by. I wasn't expecting to see you at my house. Why do you say that? Is it because you don't want me around at your house? Oh, no, no. Please don't misunderstand me. It was just a surprise, that's all. Actually, nobody informed me that you were coming. If I had known, I would have made more preparations and given you a proper welcome. No need to worry about formalities, dear. I understand that you put in a tremendous effort to bring my grandchild into the world. And I'm truly grateful for that. Have you decided on a name for her? Yeah, her name is Ellie. We decided on that name together with my husband before I gave birth. Wow, that's such a lovely name. Now that you're finally home, why don't you just kick back, relax, and take a nice hot bath? Leave everything to me. I'm preparing dinner and it'll be ready in just a few minutes. You know, you really don't have to go through all this trouble. I'm already back home and feeling much better. So please, let me handle the cooking. You're the guest. So just make yourself at home and if you'd like, you can spend some time with Ellie too. How could I possibly do that? You just went through the incredible feat of giving birth to Ellie, my granddaughter. Cooking for us is the least I could do in return. Plus, I've been handling the cooking for Bentley and myself for a whole month now, so I promise it'll turn out just fine. A whole month? So you've been staying at my house while I was at my parents' place? Getting ready for the birth? Why was I completely unaware of this? It's my fault, Amy. Please don't blame my son for it. In fact, when I found out that you were going to stay at your parents' house to give birth, I felt really bad for Bentley. I knew he would struggle without a woman taking care of him. That's why I made the decision to stay at your house temporarily and help my son with the household chores and all that. But of course, Bentley and I were afraid that you might feel jealous if he knew that I moved in to live with him. So we chose to keep it a secret from you. We didn't want you to feel hurt or offended or anything like that. Oh, so that's the reason? If I hadn't done that, I'm sure Brantley would have been surviving on frozen meals. And we both know that's not good for his health. We can't have that, right? I just want you to understand that I did all of this with good intentions. I never intended to be intrusive or a meddling mother-in-law or anything like that. No, no, of course not. I'm incredibly grateful for your help. Thank you for taking such good care of my husband and our home for the past month. Your support means everything to me. And I couldn't ask for more. When I walked into the house, everything was so tidy and the air felt fresh. I'm sure you put a lot of effort into cleaning the house, right? Honestly, if Brentley had been alone during this time, the house wouldn't be nearly as clean as it is now. Oh, don't mention it, Amy. I'm honored to be able to help now. Instead of wasting your time on chores, why not take some well-deserved rest and let me handle everything? I know you must be exhausted, so a nice relaxing bath and a delicious meal will definitely work wonders. Oh, thanks, Lisa. Just tell me if it becomes too much for you. I'd gladly lend you a helping hand. Hey, Brentley. When are you coming home? I was expecting you to be here to welcome me and see our daughter. But instead, it was your mom who answered the door when I arrived. Oh, shoot. I totally forgot to mention it. I had to go to work today because there's this super important project that needs my full attention. I'm pulling some overtime to get it done before the deadline and make a good impression on my boss. So you two go ahead and have dinner. Don't worry about me. What? But you knew in advance that I was coming back today. And you didn't even bother to be here and see me and our newborn child? Didn't I just mention a few seconds ago that I have urgent work to do? Plus, you have my mom waiting for you at home. Isn't that enough? What else do you expect? A grand welcome home party or something? I didn't 
didn't mean that. I never asked for any extravagant party. All I wanted was for you to be there. Give me a hug and comfort me. I get it. I really do. I just didn't have the time, as I mentioned earlier. But hey, we're husband and wife, right? We're in this for the long haul. So why get so worked up about me not being there to greet you? And just to clarify things, you didn't even tell me that your mom was staying in her house the entire time I was away from my home birth. What does that even mean? You should have at least discussed it with me and asked for my opinion before letting her move in. Hey, don't be mad just because of that. She only wanted to lend a helping hand. Actually, I was just about to ask you if you had already thanked my mom for the time she spent here. I don't have any issue with her moving in and helping you out around the house. I just wish either you or your mom had let me know about it beforehand. By the way, now that I'm back home, is your mom planning to return to her own house soon? Hey, hold on. Why are you in such a rush to kick my mom out of the house? Wouldn't it be better if she just stays here and helps with the chores while you take care of the baby? It's not like she's causing any trouble, right? I don't know, Brentley. I just don't feel comfortable having her around. You know we've had some conflicts in the past, right? It's just that her presence brings up some uneasy feelings for me. Then that's even more reason for you to try and get along with her, don't you think? I know she'll be helpful when it comes to parenting. She has a lot of wisdom to share and can guide us in raising Ellie the right way. Plus, she did give you a warm welcome today, right? She prepared the bathtub and cooked dinner for you. It seems like she's making an effort for us to get along, so it's only fair that you open up and appreciate her acts of kindness. I mean, I guess you're right. I was also surprised by how kind your mother was to me today. It totally caught me off guard. In a good way. See, she was just giving you a hard time because we hadn't had a grandchild yet. But now that Ellie has been born, there's nothing that could possibly go wrong between you and my mom. Trust me on this. Everything will be smooth sailing from now on. Hey, Brentley. Have you taken your lunch break yet? Yeah, I'm just about to grab a bite. What's up? Have you seen my wedding ring anywhere? I've been looking for it, but I can't seem to find it. It's usually kept in the bedroom drawer. It's your wedding ring. You should take better care of it and keep it in a safe place instead of constantly misplacing it. Honestly, you should be wearing it all the time instead of tossing it around like it's no big deal. I see that you're still as careless as ever, huh? No, Brentley. You know I had to take off and store my wedding ring because it didn't fit during pregnancy. I made sure to keep it safe in the bedroom drawer before I left our house. And now it's gone! It's just the ring or two. It's fine. You don't have to keep stressing over finding them. Just a ring? Are you serious? That's the treasured ring we chose together for our wedding. It holds so much sentimental value. And it's irreplaceable. Oh, please, stop being so overdramatic. We can simply go to the store and buy a new one when we have the time. And let's not forget, it's your own carelessness that led to losing it in the first place. So don't you dare raise your voice at me about it. But it's not just the ring. My expensive overseas brand bag is missing too. It's the bag I saved up for and bought with so much effort before we got married. And even the shoes from another overseas brand that I splurged on as a birthday gift to myself are gone. The ring is one thing, but it's really strange for such large items to disappear. I only use them on special occasions and hardly ever move them from their storage. Well, I'm pretty sure you just misplaced them somewhere. Or maybe you brought them with you to your parents' house without even realizing it. If you just take a closer look, I'm sure you'll be able to find them. Now please stop texting me because I need to finish up my meal. You're taking up way too much of my lunchtime. Amy, why you little? I told you it wasn't necessary to call the police. 
Why do you always have to defy everything I tell you to do, huh? I mean, what other explanation is there? You said you didn't know about my missing belongings, and you didn't even go into the bedroom, right? That can only mean one thing. Someone must have broken into our house and stolen them. The bedroom must have been burglarized. I've already told you. You just need to search more thoroughly through your things and you'll eventually find them. But what did you do instead? You made a big fuss by calling the police and we had to go through all that questioning. I seriously felt like we were being treated like criminals. And it's just so upsetting. I'm sorry if it caused any trouble but I lost some really valuable items that mean a lot to me. And I'm determined to figure out who took them. It's important to me. And I hope you understand. That doesn't give you the right to treat me and your husband like we're some kind of criminals. When all of this is over, you better be on your hands and knees begging us for forgiveness. Amy? Can you please explain what's going on? I just found these divorce papers and I have no idea what's happening. Oh, so you've already seen them, huh? Yeah, that's right. We're getting a divorce. Is there a problem with that? Huh? What do you mean? What happened? Why do you suddenly want to divorce me? I really don't get it. First, you get all worked up over some dumb things going missing, and now you want a divorce? Are you dealing with post-pregnancy depression or something? Do you want me to take you to a therapist? Oh, no, no, Brantley. I can assure you that I'm perfectly fine. In fact, it's you and your mom who have the issues. Just admit it. You've been cheating on me, right? And not just with one girl but with eight different girls. Wait, how, how do you know all that? Well, well, take a look at this. Does this handkerchief ring any bells for you? The police found it on the shelf where we used to keep our favorite photos and paintings. Wait, what? Hey, that's not something for you to mess with. Give it back to me. But did you find anything else besides that? Oh. Of course we did. And let's just say it was quite an interesting piece of evidence. <laughs> hey, don't tell me. That's right. Who would have guessed that there was a tiny camera hidden inside that handkerchief, huh? It's pretty mind-blowing. Well, that, I, I have no idea what you're talking about. You know what? The police and I have already gone through the videos that were recorded by it. And I bet you already know what's in those videos, right? Just imagine what would happen if I sent these videos to every single one of the girls you've been cheating on me with. It would be quite the explosive situation, don't you think? <laughs> what? How dare you watch those videos? They were never meant for you to watch. Oh. Who do you think you are to lecture me on what I can and cannot do? You're absolutely shameless, Brentley. I couldn't believe my ears when I heard you telling each girl in those videos that she's the only love of your life. It seems like you've been leading a double life. Showering women with gifts in exchange for secretly filming your encounters, huh? And surprise, surprise. It's you who stole my brand name bag and shoes and gave them to your girlfriends, isn't it? Well, that, that's none of your business. <laughs> You've really got some nerve, don't you? Why is it suddenly none of my business when it's my belongings that you stole? Let me tell you, it wasn't just me who watched those videos. The police saw them all too. And trust me, the fun doesn't stop there. Those videos not only exposed your crime, but also your mother's. Talk about a family affair, huh? My, my mom? What does she have to do with all this? I have no idea. But somehow, it seems the recording button was accidentally left on. Capturing the moment Lisa stole my wedding ring. It's all on the videos. 
What? So she was the one who stole your ring? No wonder I couldn't find it anywhere. Oh, so you wanted to steal my wedding ring and sell it for money too? Why am I not surprised? It looks like your own twisted hobby has backfired on you, huh? Initially, I thought I was being targeted because of my brand name items. But who would have thought the culprits were right here in our own house? Anyway, just sign the divorce papers so we can put an end to all of this. What? Divorce? Please don't divorce me. Anything but that, please. I don't want to lose you. Our divorce won't be the only bad news coming your way today. You'll also have to pay me the same amount as the sold items as compensation during our upcoming divorce trial. On top of that, I'll be demanding double the standard amount for alimony and compensation for infidelity. Now, you might wonder, why double? Well, think about it. Your mistresses seem to be married, right? I could easily inform their spouses about your affair with them. I bet you wouldn't like the thought of being sued by each spouse, huh? No. No, I won't. Look, I agree to pay double the standard amount. I'll sign the divorce papers too. Just please don't tell them anything. Let's keep this as discreet as possible. Great choice. I guess now you're left to figure out where you can get the money to pay, huh? Have fun with that. Amy, please. Please don't throw me and my son in jail. We know we made a mistake, and we're so, so sorry for that. I swear, I won't do it again. And I'll return everything I ever stole from you. So you're telling me that you had stolen other things from me before? Oh, no, no, I didn't mean that at all. <laughs> Look, I'll return the ring to you, alright? I haven't sold it, it's right here. If you just come here, I can give it back to you. Nah, it doesn't matter anymore. You can keep the ring for all I care. After all, Brentley and I will be getting divorced soon. So if you return the ring to me, I wouldn't know what else to do with it other than selling it for some cash. Just make sure you pay me back the equal amount of money I paid to buy the ring. That's all that matters now. And of course, if you give the ring back or pay me the money, it won't save you from your prison sentence. So be prepared for that as well. No, Amy, please have some mercy on your poor mother-in-law. I swear, this is the first and the last time I ever stole anything from you. If you just forgive me, I'm willing to start anew again. I'll treat you nicely. I'll see you as my own daughter. Let's put this behind us and move forward together. Do you think that I have any interest in your meaningless promises? No, of course not. They mean nothing to me other than empty words. By the way, I think your husband will be arriving really soon to ask for some explanations about your little affair. I hope you have enough lies up your sleeve to convince your husband that you're innocent. <laughs> Good luck with that. Wait, what? You're saying my husband is coming to get me? And he even knows about my affair? Oh God, I'm doomed. This can't end well. I saw it all in the videos. You were intimately engaged with a much younger man maybe in his 30s? On my bed. His name is Sebastian, right? You had the audacity to tell him that your husband means nothing to you, and you were willing to give him money after finding out his wife had been cutting his allowance. Unbelievable. Hey, I'm warning you. Don't show that to my husband, got it? He doesn't need to see all that. Let's keep this between us, okay? Well, it's up to him if he chooses to watch the videos or not. That's none of my concern. What I'm interested in is the footage where you were rummaging through the bedroom shelves and taking my ring. You even shamelessly told your lover that you'd sell my ring to have some fun with him. I guess you're so sure of yourself because you thought, it's hard to prosecute family living together for theft. Huh, you clearly said that in the video yourself. 
No, honey, you've got it all wrong. I didn't mean what I said at all. I was just joking around, you know that. I was just trying to pull a prank on you. It was all meant to be a silly joke, nothing serious. You know what? Both you and your son are completely shameless. Even when your misdeeds are pointed out, not only did you feel guilty, but your conversation suggested that you were proud of your cunning. It's truly disappointing to see this lack of remorse. Please, Amy, it's not what you think it is. I can explain, just give me a chance. Oh no, I just heard someone knocking on the door. Is it my husband? I really don't wanna meet him right now. Amy, can you somehow tell him to go home? You're the only one he listens to. I just can't deal with him at the moment. I'm really stressed out. Oh, so Kyle is here already? That's fast. But don't be too nervous, Lisa. Maybe it's your husband. Maybe it's the police. Who knows? Either way, it seems like trouble is knocking at your door. What? The police? That's even worse than dealing with my husband. Or maybe they came together and want to have a few words with you. You know you can't hide forever, right? Sooner or later, you'll have to face them. Anyways, why am I even wasting my time talking to you? You and your son are clearly not worth it. You're just the garbage of society. So I'll leave you two to deal with the mess of your own creation because I have way better things to do. Bye-bye. I'll see you in court. Amy, are you there? I hope you and our daughter are doing okay. The thing is, I have spent a lot of time thinking about us, about our family, and I've come to realize that I was wrong. I want us to come back together. I hope it's still possible. I miss you both so much. <laughs> What's this? You're making me laugh so hard right now, I can't even. Normally, I'd ignore you altogether, but this is actually funny as hell. So tell me, what drove you to this grand conclusion, huh? I'm curious to hear your explanation for this sudden change of heart. Well, it's a long story, but... Tell me, I have all the time in the world especially when it comes to finding out how miserable your life has become. Spill the beans. I'm all ears. Hey, come on. Don't be so cruel. It's not funny. Okay, listen. I was drowning in debt from all those compensations, and I had no clue what to do. But out of nowhere, this woman comes along and offers to help me out. I thought she was like a goddess descended or something. But boy, was I wrong. Turns out she was nothing but trouble. I thought we were getting serious, maybe even heading towards marriage, only to find out she was already engaged to someone else. Can you believe it? I feel like such a fool for falling for her. Oh, that's so sad. I feel for you. I actually do. Or... Maybe not. I even spent what little money I had on a ring and dates for her, but only to end up with a big loss and a broken heart. You won't even imagine how sad and depressed I was. That's why I've come to realize that it's only you, my beautiful and caring wife, who can give me the happy married life that I truly deserve. I know I've made a mistake in the past, and I'm so sorry for that. But please, can we somehow get back together? I really miss you. Hello? Amy? Are you still there? Amy! When confronted by my father-in-law, my mother-in-law, and my husband, they pleaded with bowed heads. However, Kyle and I exchanged glances and laughed. We both demanded a divorce from our partners. And Brentley and Lisa had no other choice but to accept our demands. 
Afterward, my father-in-law angrily obtained the contact details of Lisa's lover, who was in tears, and called him over. He informed the lover and his wife about the affair, which led to their divorce as well. Both spouses demanded compensation for their cheating partners during the divorce trials. While I promised not to inform the mistress's spouses, I never said I wouldn't demand compensation from the mistresses themselves. After extracting all the communications from my husband's smartphone, I contacted each woman to claim compensation for the affair, and they agreed to pay. Secretly, I couldn't help but feel glad that my husband had so many mistresses. It turned out to be quite profitable. Turning the harm I suffered into financial compensation didn't erase the damage done but it helped cover my expenses and take good care of my daughter. Eventually, my husband ended up paying compensation to the spouses of his mistresses as well. As for my mother-in-law, she proposed marriage to her affair partner after her divorce, but she was spectacularly rejected. Undeterred, she repeatedly ambushed him during his commute until she was cautioned under a public nuisance ordinance, putting an end to their relationship. As for Kyle, after separating from Lisa and becoming estranged from his son, I worried about him being alone. However, it seems the compensation money from the divorce trial sparked an interest in Bonsai. Now he happily participates in a circle with people who share his hobby. Unexpectedly, I looked him up and discovered he even set up a social media account. As for me, I had grown fed up with men in marriage. I decided to focus on being a strong single mother. I relied on my parents until my child was old enough for daycare. And then I started job hunting. It took about a year juggling child rearing, but I found a great company that is understanding of single mothers. There was even talk of a promotion when my child reaches middle school. Despite everything, the true joy comes from sharing meals with my daughter and occasionally with my parents.